Welcome to the seating and selection show for the 2023 Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue State Volleyball Championships. On this show, we will release the brackets for all classes and hear from some of the coaches. I know the Texco Wolverines are out there watching. Melrose is meeting as a team and streaming the show as well. Hot Springs has a get together. Shout out to the Tigers. Legacy Academy is anxiously awaiting. The Artesia Bulldogs are together and watching. St. Michael's is out there waiting to see what seed they get coming in. We could have some more shout outs on the show, so stay with us. But before we get to all that, we always like to remind everyone how the seeding and selection process works. The seeding process is not the NMAA sitting in a room, randomly deciding who should be the number one seed, the two seed, et cetera, et cetera. It is not that. What it is, is a process that is all data driven. The following criteria is used to determine a team's seed. We look at finish in regular season district play, max preps rankings, overall record, wins against district champs regardless of class, member school input, that's the coach's input in their rankings, and any head-to-head -head matchups. The schools are compared to one another with each of those criteria points and the seeding is determined like one big math problem. It's all based on the numbers and the data. In the event of a tie, among those criteria points, head-to-head -head will be used to break the tie. If there's no head-to-head -head competition or the head-to-head -head competition is tied, then max preps strength of schedule will be used to break the tie. There is no input given by NMAA staff. I will repeat that again so everybody hears it. No input by NMAA staff. It's all data driven based on those criteria points. Did you beat a district champ? Did you have a better record? Were you ranked higher? All of those things. There is no bias for or against any school or team. Now that you understand how it's done, let's get to it. Let's start this parade like Harold Hill and 76 trombones. For the kids, that's a Music Man reference. You clicked on this show to see the brackets, right? Well, let's get to it. We will start in Class 1A, and the number one team in that classification is a team that's been a fixture in the finals, Melrose. Melrose is the number one seed. Melrose has played in a final each of the last nine seasons. Melrose middle, Chancey Elliott tore her ACL in regular season and is out for the year, but other players have stepped up. They lost in the final last year, but just like we don't talk about Bruno, they don't talk about last year. You know, this group's a completely different group. Um, I, you know, I think, you know, we talked about a lot how there's just inherited pressure just from the success we've had over the last 10 years. Um, and that's there. But uh, we, we don't talk about last season. We just talk about, you know, the game we're in or the week we're in and, and, and moving one step at a time. The top four teams in the bracket get a bye, and they are Logan, Legacy Academy, and Gateway Christian. Gateway Christian is the defending state champ. They've been in the final each of the last three years. Logan last won it all in 2018 and 19. Legacy Academy has only been a member with the NMAA five years and reached the final four last year. They say they are ready to take the next step. You know, one of our mottos is one team, one dream. And so the process of becoming a champion and I think they're starting to finally see fruit of that. We've had that motto for a few years now, and they're just working really hard. It's a really good group of girls, and they definitely want the blue. And so they're just putting forth everything on and off the court um, and really just enjoying the process of being a champion. And just they come into practice every day, just ready to go. And they've been doing really well. Let's take a look at the bracket. Fort Sumner House is in as an eight and Mesilla Valley, the nine. Springer is the five seed and will take on Alamo Navajo. Roy Mascaro is the six and will go up against Grady. Pine Hill is the seven and they get Kamado. This bracket requires a little explanation. There was a three-way tie between Pine Hill, Fort Sumner House, and Mesilla Valley. Pine Hill won that three-way tie and gets the seven seed. The last slot went to Grady because Grady beat Elida and Grady beat Evangel Christian on criteria points. Grady is the 11 because Alamo Navajo has to get in as a district champ. 
On to Class 2A. The top seed goes to the only undefeated team in the state, the Cloudcroft Bears. Cloudcroft earned number one. They haven't been beaten. They are led by Jaden Hughes and Kyla Aguilar, both powerful hitters. They last won it all in 2020, and they are excited and anxious for another shot. They want that championship so bad. So we're we're very hopeful. We've watched a lot of film. We're ready to to rock this this court and ready to rock the state court too. So they're they're moving forward wanting to be successful. And I think there's some superpower in that. The top four teams in the bracket get a bye, and they are Texaco, Tularosa, and Laguna Acoma. Tularosa played in the final in 2021. Laguna Acoma won it all the last two years. Texaco is a traditional powerhouse with 16 state titles more than any other program. Texaco has six seniors on the roster. Adeline Autry is their middle hitter, and she's come up big. Each of their last seven wins have all been sweeps. I absolutely love how we're playing right now. We have like we've been on it we've been talking about having a championship mindset for like the last few weeks where anytime we step on the floor for practice or for a game we don't want to have any excuses we just want to go out there and play try to get every ball up in the air and play defense because it is killer when the other team knows that they can't put a ball down against us so we've had that championship mindset of no excuses go out there and do what we know how to do and we'll let the rest take care of itself Let's take a look at the bracket. Estancia is the eight and Santa Rosa the nine. They match up. Hagerman is the five and will take on Rijo with Christian the 12. Escalante is the six seed and Tatum the 11. Manal is in as a seven and Cuesta is the 10. Now, a little more explaining here. Loving had a quality body of work, but Jal and Loving were tied in district. Jal beat Loving in criteria points, so Jal would get in before Loving. Rehoboth Christian beats Jal and McCurdy in criteria points to get the last slot, leaving Jal and Loving on the outside looking in. Now, as I mentioned, Laguna Acoma is the two-time defending state champ in this classification. Melanie Garcia took over as head coach at Laguna Acoma in season. Another state title would give the Hawks a three-peat. They have the will for it. They have the, they do have that, that mindset and they do have the ability to, to um, three peat if they wanted to, you know, but it would, and I said, I go, you know what, you guys, you guys call it a three peat, but no, I go, you're your own, you know, this is your state tournament. You're not, you know, you don't have, we have one senior that was part of the two state championship teams, one senior. And so I go, she's the only one that can say she has a three peat if we make, if we make it that far. You know, I go, just, you know, you got to take it one game at a time from here, guys. I go, don't take the whole pie and think you're going to be able to finish it. You got to take it one bite at a time. <laughs> Moving on to class 3A and the number one team is St. Michael's. St. Michael's is the defending state champ. They played in the final each of the last two years. They only lost two seniors from last year's title team. They have six seniors on this roster, so they come in with experience and come into the tourney with the number one ranking. Sometimes it's a big target on your back walking in with that number one seed, but you know we try really hard to remain humble and and like I said, just take every single game at a time because you never know. You know, you never know. You can have a bad day. Um, the good thing about the state tournament is that if you do lose, you know, in the first two rounds, you do get the opportunity to to work your way back up. And at the same time, if you keep winning, you know, you try to do the, you know, figure out the bracket, who would we play this time? What we, you know, but with this type of selection, you never know who you're going to play because of that, that double elimination um, bracket. So, um, you know, we're just going to focus on playing our best every single day on Thursday, one game, Friday, one game, you know, and, and take each day at a time. The top four teams in the bracket get a bye, and they are Hot Springs, Santa Fe Union School, and Sandia Prep. The Sun Devils won it all in 2020. Looking at Santa Fe Indian School's resume, they beat defending state champ Laguna Acoma earlier this year. Hot Springs has a veteran squad with six seniors, including Ava Harrelson, Big Red. Unfortunately, she had emergency surgery during last year's state tournament, and she is a force to be reckoned with. They are ready to make a run. Last year, I was really um, thinking, man, this is the team. This is the team that we're going to be able to get to that championship game. And who knows what would have happened if we would have had 
Big Red Ava healthy and with us last year. And um, I thought, oh gosh, losing our senior setter last year um, and one of our pretty dominant outside hitters, I thought, oh gosh, this year is, is not going to be it. And then we have just been really moving puzzle pieces around and playing chess with our, our team. And yeah, I think we have a really good chance to see championship Saturday. Let's take a look at the bracket. West Las Vegas is the eight, Tohatchee the nine, Tucum Carey is in as a five and gets Rui Doso the 12. Cottonwood Classical is invited into the field as a six and will face Navo Prep the 11. Robertson is the seven and will take on Cobre the 10. Robertson reached the final each of the last two years. Class 4A is up next. The top seed goes down to the dog down south, Artesia. Congratulations to the Artesia Bulldogs, the number one seed. Artesia won it all in 2021. They have two players on this year's squad from that title team, but this program learned a thing or two from that championship run. Last year, um, we had nearly the same team coming back and uh, we didn't play well at state. And uh, in fact, we played pretty bad. So I asked the seniors when we got home, you know, what the deal was. And, and they told us that the, the previous year, they were the seventh uh, seed and I, I had COVID and um, they said, they, they talked about how they just wanted to go there and have fun. They didn't expect much. And then I think they played that away. Uh, and that was part of the reason they had success is they, they just didn't have any pressure, you know, and uh, then last year they felt like they were the defending champions. And so they had to prove something or whatever. So they, I think they had came in with a lot of pressure and uh, I think that caused problems for them. Um, so uh, we, we really haven't talked about any of that because it's pretty much a, a, a new group, but um, uh, you know, just learn some lessons from that. The top four teams in the bracket get a bye, and they are Goddard, St. Pius, and Albuquerque Academy, all four power programs. Goddard won it all last season, beating St. Pius in the final, and the Chargers took home the title in 2020. Let's take a look at the bracket. Get your cameras out for the photo. Maybe that video clip you want to post when you see your school. Here it is. Miyamura is the eight seed, and Santa Teresa the nine. Los Alamos is the five, and Silver is the 12. Hope Christian comes in as a six seed against Valencia, the 11. Portalis is your seven, and Gallup gets the 10. Last but not least is Class 5A. The top team heading into the postseason is none other than the Las Cruces Bulldogs. Las Cruces is 22-1 and one overall. They have arguably the most dominant player in the state in Addison Massey. Las Cruces hasn't lost to a New Mexico school this season. In fact, They've only lost one set since August 26th. All of their wins but one were a sweep. Las Cruces has wins against La Cueva and Cibola this season. I don't think our kids were necessarily surprised by the way that we played against those top teams, but I think there's some affirmation there that, yes, we're, we are one of the better teams in the state. And, you know, this is, you know, one week to see how we do. And there's a bit of luck in this. There's a bit of, I think you have to be fortunate to win a state championship. And it's been a while for Las Cruces High, so. So how do you feel about your chances this year? I think we're playing good volleyball. I think there are usually, in most sports, maybe four or five teams that could win a state championship. And I think as coaches, we know sometimes, hey, we're going to state, but our chances aren't great. I think this year, uh, I like our chances. I like the fact that we're, we've been consistent. We're playing well. And, uh, you know, I, I think we're going to come up there with, uh, with the attitude that this is a a achievable. This is something that we can do. The top four teams in the bracket get a bye, and they are La Cueva, Cibola, and Los Lunas. Congratulations to all of them. La Cueva watching the show. Shout out to the Bears. La Cueva is the two-time defending state champ. Cibola is the three. Cibola's Ella Parker recently signed to play at St. John's. And Los Lunas won a state title in 2018. Let's get to the final bracket. Santa Fe, you are the eight. Albuquerque High is nine. You will face off. Cleveland comes in as a five seed. Cleveland's Marion Hatch is going to play for UNM. The Storm also have junior Kelsey Hefner in the middle. 
They will go up against Hobbs, the 12. El Dorado comes in as the 6, and will take on Oregon Mountain, the 11. Volcano Vista is the 7, and Rio Rancho, the 10. Now, a little explaining here. Roswell and Hobbs were tied. Roswell beat Hobbs in criteria points, but Hobbs was a district champ, so Hobbs is in. Then there was a three-way tie between Rio Rancho, Roswell, and Oregon Mountain. Rio Rancho came out on top of that three-way tie, so they're the 10. Then when you compare Roswell and Oregon Mountain, the Knights came out on top, comparing those two on criteria points. So Oregon Mountain is in as the 11. There you have it, all the brackets and the teams for this postseason. Remember that if you can't be there in person, you can watch the state championship games this fall on the NFHS Network. So get a subscription and log on so you can watch the championship matchups. Don't forget, we will have matches at four different sites this year. The Rio Rancho Event Center, Rio Rancho High School, Cleveland High School, and Bernalillo High School. The matchups, the times, and the locations can be found on our website. That's going to do it for the 2023 Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue State Volleyball Championships seating and selection show. Good luck to all the teams involved, and remember to compete with class.